In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw a fox with colored pencils and talk about my thoughts on pastel matte because this is my first time trying pastel matte with colored pencils. For a complete supplies list of everything I'm using for this drawing, I have a link in the description. And if you don't already know, I have a full real-time version of this tutorial over on my Patreon with the reference photo for this drawing, where you can also learn more in depth about techniques like drawing fur, layering, and more. By signing up, you'll also get instant access to a growing library of other drawing tutorials in colored pencil, graphite, and soft pastel. A link to my Patreon is in the description. Let's get started on this fox. First things first, I'm going to start working in the eye. And I start with the lighter colors, which will be some cream and yellow colors to get the uh, yellows into the eye before I start working in the outer structure or the lines with a black pencil. Now up to this point in using the pastel matte for these colored pencils, I'm not really noticing too much of a difference between a more textured drawing paper. Um, my layering process at this point is fairly simple. I'm not doing a whole lot of stroke layers yet, which is where you kind of notice more of a difference between pastel matte and regular drawing papers. So I'm working in the base layer for all of the kind of lighter areas on the fox. And it's important to get your base layers in and get the color at least pretty close to being as accurate as it should be if you're using a reference photo or a live study that you want to get your base layer accurate because once you start drawing those stroke layers over the top of it to get your fur details in, it's just going to be a lot easier for you to get the drawing done if you have that done already so that you don't have to come back through and make more work for yourself trying to readjust your base layer underneath your stroke layers. So I'm using a, I believe it's burnt ochre for the back part of the head because that is in the shadow from where the light is coming for this fox and I want to use more of a darker orangey yellow color for the sections that are in the shadows. And I also want to block in the ears with the first layer for blacks. Now I'm going to use odorless mineral spirits and a number three brush to blend out this base layer for the ears. Blending with pastel matte is actually pretty different compared to other papers. So you would think that because it's a heavily textured paper that you would have to move your brush around more to get it to actually blend, uh, but it's actually the opposite. I was quite surprised that it almost felt like I was painting with paint, while trying to blend my colored pencil into the paper. And so it's actually pretty easy to accidentally blend your areas too much. So you want to be careful of that if you're using pastel matte for colored pencils, that when you're trying to blend certain areas of your drawing, you may want to use a smaller brush so that you don't accidentally end up smudging the edges of where you plan to end that color and smudge it into an area where you didn't intend it to be because it is very, very easy to do that. And from what I discovered with this drawing and this paper is that this paper is very, very easy to damage. It is much easier to damage than regular drawing papers. So if you accidentally mess up uh, an area and have to erase, you need to have a gentle eraser for this paper. You cannot put a lot of pressure on there or you will permanently destroy the paper and make yourself unable to get any details onto a section that you work in. So now I'm starting to work in some more of those colors to the fox. And this is kind of more to the base layer for the um, other sections of this fox's face. I already kind of worked in what was going to be the initial first layer. And since this is my first time working with this paper, I didn't want to go all out because I didn't know how it was going to behave with layering and blending and all that. So I've worked in some of my first stroke layers to the front face of the fox starting around the eye and working my way out from there. 
the eye is the focal point of my drawing so I do want to try and get a little bit more details in this area rather than trying to focus on getting a lot of detail throughout the rest of the fox. It's not absolutely necessary to have every single detail in your drawings for it to look realistic. The most important thing is making sure that you get your values right. And when you're building fur it is a layering process so to get the adequate values that you need in your fur, it will take a bit of time to get that because you do have to, to make um, multiple fur stroke layers of different colors to build up the structure of the fur. Now it's also important as you're drawing fur around the face of an animal to pay attention to the different fur lengths. The fur length, especially when you're working in smaller drawings, this is a fairly small drawing. It is a four by six inch and the uh, size of each of the hairs changes quite a bit and their directions. So I'm paying really close attention to how quickly they're changing so that I can make all of my strokes in the same direction and the same length that they need to be for each individual little tiny area. So even just the, the section of fur that is like the eyebrow of the fox, there's a lot of changes there with the fur direction. So it does kind of come out from that crease where the eye is and point towards the front of the fox's face and then it kind of curves around and up to the right around the fox's eye and it also does that kind of on the lower section of the eye as well it starts in where the um, apex is and kind of curves its way out and towards the right and away from the eye and the fur on the nose of the fox actually grows kind of different too. So they, the nose from, or the fur, excuse me, the fur from the nose grows towards the eye and then the fur from the eye actually grows kind of downwards. So they kind of meet in the middle there and both end up going down towards the fox's mouth. Now, as I'm working in some shadows for this fox, it's important that when you're working in shadows for all animals, that you stick with trying to use colors and don't use black until you're absolutely um, close to being done with your layering process. Black should be kind of the highlight for your shadows instead of the buildup of it. Now, in the case with the ears, that's different because it is black there and there is going to be really no other colors, especially if if you're looking at the reference photo that you're using and you can see that it is pretty much as black as black gets. Now, it's important that for a fox in specific that you want to use some browns to build in the shadow layers in the areas where there need to be shadows and only on the areas where the fox is kind of got red fur. You don't want to do that, of course, where the fox is white. Now, the white fur of the fox, which I'll get to in just a little bit, is kind of a mix up of some warm um, gray colors as well as cool gray colors. Oftentimes, animals tend to have a blend of both of those colors and not just one. So you're going to want to use a combination of cool gray colors as well as warm grays to work in the fur details for the white fur. As I'm working in these stroke layers for the back side of the head, I am using darker tones or darker colors for that because there isn't as much light, so I don't want to use lighter colors for this section. Highlighted sections or mid-tone sections on animals are often different colors than they are the shadows. So you wanna make sure that when you are drawing your drawings, be it this fox or other drawings, that you are paying close attention to the differences of colors and use different colors for both mid-tones, highlights, and shadows instead of using the same colors. So now I'm going to use my odorless mineral spirits and brush and blend out that little section there right by the cheek. 
between where the white fur starts. That was kind of the base layer of the fur that um, I hadn't quite gotten in yet. I wanna make sure I get that in and drying before I start working in other details to the fox. So now I am working in some darker shadow strokes to the fur in the back section of the fox's head. It's important that when you're building your fur stroke layers that you work from light to dark. And I'm treating this paper as if it was regular drawing paper. I'm not trying to draw on it, how do I put it, more like pastels. This paper allows you to kind of work with colored pencils a little bit more like pastels, but only to an extent. It's not completely like pastels because colored pencils, they are a translucent medium. So you can kind of see through the colors, especially lighter colors. and even though on this paper you can draw over darks, it's still somewhat transparent. It shows up way better than it does on regular drawing papers, but it's not like it's just the best thing in the world. You still have to be mindful about where you're putting your strokes and how those colors are going to behave on this paper and how you should change what you're doing and not try to just rely on doing it like you would paint or pastels. So with building the fur structures and working from light to dark, I'm working in some of those lighter base colors, then I'm working in some lighter fur stroke layers, which would be from the lighter to mid-tone spe spectrum. And then from there, I am working more of the mid-tone um, fur stroke layers. And then after that is when I start working in some shadow fur stroke layers. So I've added some warm gray, a lighter warm gray to the base layer for the chest or the white of the fox as well as some cool gray there because there is a shadow cast by this fox's head onto its chest where it's white. Now the cool thing about this paper, as I said before, is that you can kind of go over the top of your darks. So I have used the Luminance White to go over some of the black areas on the nose and create a highlight, which is really, really nice to be able to do, um, being able to go over your darks and create some highlights like that. But at the same time, my personal opinions on this paper I do love that you can add those effects to it. However, for smaller drawings, this paper is very, very textured. You'll notice by looking at the fur, just from these shots of me drawing, is that my fur strokes are very, very ragged looking. They're not straight, um, thin lines. And that's because this paper is very textured. I would consider it kind of more like, um, pastel paper has a little bit of a different texture, but in essence, it's like a really fine grained pastel paper. And it works great, of course, for adding those lights over darks, but you just can't quite get those minute details like you can with other drawing papers. So it's not some, it's not a type of paper that I'm going to be using regularly with my drawings to the effect that I don't particularly like the graininess of the drawing. So if I were to use this paper again, I would probably not use it on something so small. I would use it on a larger drawing where you're drawing your details larger so that graininess to the paper won't be so obvious. So you can see there on the chest of the fox or the tummy kind of chest, um, it's way too yellow. I make mistakes, I'm sure you make mistakes. Uh, I ended up adding two colors to that one. Well, I guess both combined together were way too yellow. So I blended all that out and I'm gonna let it dry before I take an eraser and take some of that top layer off so that I can go back and try and get more of a correct color for that. So I have worked in the base layer for the entire remainder of the fox because I do want this to dry so that I can come and start working on this next once I finish working in a lot of the um, clumpy shadow structures to the chest of this fox or building up that white fur. And I am using my darker warm gray to start building in some of those structures to the chest. 
And I did take a Tombow Mono Eraser to erase off kind of the top layer to that uh, tummy slash chest area of the fox where I had too much yellow because that eraser is very gentle and you don't have to press very hard to lift off the um, colored pencil from the paper. And you'll see as soon as I blend this out that there is a line kind of a line going against the fur coming out over the leg on that tummy part of the fox. It's much lighter in that one section because that is where I took a eraser and pressed into the paper to erase like I would on normal drawing paper and it left an indent. It damaged the paper and from then on I was unable to actually get anything to stay or stick very well in that specific area. So. You want to just be careful with this paper if you're using pastel matte for colored pencils and how you go about erasing use a gentle eraser and don't press because you don't want to damage your paper in an area where it would matter more like i would probably be really irritated if i had done that on a spot on the face of the fox instead it's kind of in an area where it's already blurry anyways and i'm not going to be doing any details there So I'm using some warm gray to get in some more shadows to the fur. I already kind of did a run through of getting some general structures in those first lighter stroke layers for the fur to build in the structure of it before I come back through with the same color and I'm adding a little bit more pressure while doing my strokes to get it down a little bit darker. And then I'm going to fill in all of the lighter areas with my um, lighter warm gray to get those values down to where they need to be. And I'm also going to use a little bit of cool gray, especially on that section um, that is closer to the tummy of the fox, right underneath the chin, because that is where the shadow is getting cast from this fox and where the light is shining on him. So then I added some darker colors over that tummy area. Now it's way more obvious that little strip you can see that it just did not want that darker um, orange color did not want to stick there. So now I'm going to add some white over the top of this because this paper does allow you to work a little bit more like pastels. Not entirely perfect, but it does. So I am actually able to draw some really nice white strokes over the top of some of my darker grays. Whereas on normal drawing papers like Bristol or just colored pencil paper from Strathmore, uh, I wouldn't really be able to do this. And if you're not using the same paper as me, you will just want to be way more careful about where you're placing all of your strokes and make sure you try and preserve the white of your paper if you're using white paper. Now I'm going through and just building in some of those um, highlighted fur structures to this back area of the fox. And I'm going to work in some shadows to this back leg. And oftentimes when you're working on your drawings, you'll run into an area where you feel like it just doesn't look right no matter what you do to it. And this leg just seemed really, really awkward to me. And for a long while, I felt like I wasn't getting it right. But sometimes challenges through art, you can feel like that. And it's important to just try and do what you can. Pay attention to the shapes that you're trying to draw instead of the actual object. Because when you start thinking about the actual object, then you'll be left thinking that it doesn't look right anyways. And so after taking a break, after finishing this fox out, working on all the other areas, coming back to it and re-looking at it, I realized that it does actually look pretty close to what I was seeing in my reference photo and that I didn't need to fret over it. So if you find yourself kind of fretting over a specific area on your drawing and you just can't get things right, take a break, come back later, and then try to reevaluate what you've got wrong, what you've got right, and what you need to change. For this leg, I want to use some darker browns 
and of course some grays because there is a little bit of a lighter, I, I'm not gonna say white because it isn't white in this specific area, but it's more like a really light cream. So I do want to use some lighter gray tones there instead of just browns so that I can get more adequate shadows instead of using just brown. Going to start working in some more of the really dark shadows to the fox. I'm going to focus adding some black in to all of the areas where it actually really needs to be dark so that I can bring more depth to this drawing. Depth is very, very important in your drawings looking realistic. If you are struggling with your drawings looking real, it is very, very likely that your values are off. So you need to make sure throughout your entire drawing process that you're constantly re-evaluating the areas that you're working on or have finished and trying to assess if you have them as dark as they need to be and as light as they need to be. Oftentimes, um, most artists don't get things as dark as they need to be. And that's somewhat okay. It actually does kind of work in your favor because the last thing you want to do is get things too dark right off the bat because then you have more work for yourself trying to fix it afterwards. But so if it's too dark, that allows, or too light, I mean, that allows you to just come back through and darken it up in light increments so that you can get it more accurate instead of adding too much and then trying to fix it afterwards. So you did see me add some white whiskers there over the top of the darks. As I said before, this paper is fantastic for allowing you to do that. However, I just would not use this paper on a regular basis for my drawings. Not only that, but it's actually fairly expensive in comparison to other drawing papers. Just going to spend some time adjusting my grays on the chest of the fox. I want to make sure that those values are accurate. Whites are actually pretty, pretty hard to do in general. And don't be afraid to take your time trying to get them right because it does matter in making sure that your values are accurate and trying to get those values with whites is a lot harder than um, regular colored fur, especially browns. Most animals tend to be kind of a brown color. You can learn more about drawing with colored pencils from the top right video. Thank you for watching.